We have two choices today. Um, you have pepperoni or no pepperoni? There, that's a good one. Um, does anyone have specific questions about anything concerning blackjack or earlier assignments even? Made you swear off casinos. Why is that? Pardon me? Oh, you hate blackjack. Okay. I thought you were going to say you saw how the odds are stacked against you in blackjack. Right. But still. Right. Okay. And if you stay home, <laughs> you break even no matter what. <laughs> there you go. So does anyone have any questions about that? Yes. Or raise your hand. Okay. In which case, we're going to talk about our next thing. I almost didn't recognize you. Yeah. Uh, you look different. Wow. Um, so we're going to go over our next thing, which is which demonstrates a number of um, important things. Um, it it uh, includes a menu. It includes. Let me let me see if I can remember what all it includes. It includes a menu. It includes database functionality. It includes multiple activities. Now, one thing uh, again, um, sort of the final version of the blackjack is supposed to be due Friday, you know, tomorrow. But I mean, I can put that off. So don't let that be anxiety provoking. If you're having difficulty, you know, we can just talk about it and we can figure out and get you back on track. So I don't want, I don't want it to be intimidating because I recognize, I mean, these are harder programs than probably um, uh, in, in many of the classes, you know. Um, so I, I recognize that. So, um, you're making, um, you know, if you're making progress, that, that's fine. We can, uh, uh, we can adjust the due dates correspondingly. All right, this is a little address book. All right. And... We'll find out now, won't we? I don't know. I don't know why having this information now would matter. It's a secret, all right? It was to keep you in suspense. The thing is, is, is ultimately, yes, you're making your own, right? But you're making your own. I mean, even the stuff they give you, the template, is just like a start. So, I mean, it, that's, it's not like the, the menu is finished, per se. You know, it is, it's just a start. All right, so let's go and run the address book which I already have open. All right. One thing I do not like about this is that when you initially open it, you just get a very blank screen. All right. This is a usability issue more than anything. You need to press the menu, and then you have an option to add contact. So, um, I have to remember if this example, what version this example is based on. This might be doing menus the old way, but we're not going to worry about menus first off um, in detail. We'll worry about the other stuff first. So if I do have to revise this to use the new style menus, I can, I can do that. So I hit Add Contact. And I get a blank screen with places for name, phone, email, city, state, zip, and so on. Now, 
one thing that you should notice about this is that so far we've seen two activities. All right, because two different screens have been presented to the user. No, it, it, it doesn't it doesn't make sense because I, I could see where you would think that because there's no contacts. But that first screen would look different if there were already contacts in here. So yeah, I can I can yeah, these this wasn't inflated. Um I'm gonna remove my taskbar to whatever it's called. So I go in and I can put in a name. And other information. And there's a save button. I can click that. And it saves it. That's what that first screen would look like if there's people in there. It would contain um, um, a list of the contacts. So if I go in and add a second person, And there's two people in there. All right? Now, so, so far we've seen two activities. Remember, what's an activity? An activity is a screen presented to the user for the user to do something. So, one screen that we have is we have this as the list of contacts. That's presenting to us and we have choices of what to do. We can either go in and view a contact or we can add a contact. So we have two choices of what to do here. All right. Um, if we click the menu and click add contact, we add a contact. If we click on one of the contacts, it brings up their information in a edit mode. I'm sorry, not in an edit mode, in a read only mode. To get into edit mode, you have to click the menu again and either edit the contact or delete it. So if I click edit it, then I'm back in the entry screen. All right. Where I can go in and change the information. Add information, change it, whatever. And save it. Then we go back to the view, and if we hit back again, we go back to the list. So, in a nutshell, there are three activities going on here, three different screens the user sees. And that's a pretty safe way to look at it. The three different screens correspond to three activities. We have a list, we have viewing a contact, and we have editing a contact. All right. Now we can also go in and delete a contact. We get a confirmation and it goes and deletes them. Yes. I mean, we're just interested in the behavior, the way this works. We're going to spend time looking at the, the details of this. I can't recall if I put this up on Canvas or not. I will if I have not. I thought I might have though. And I will need to update this for the menus. So I'll, I'll put, we'll, we'll look at everything but the menus today. I mean, we'll glance at the menus, but we won't spend much time on the menus because I have to revise them anyhow. All right. So let's look at the code and let's see what is different here in this code.
all right, more than anything else. And let me open up text edit. First of all, let's look under drawables. There's the icon in three different places. I think this is simply, we had talked a little bit about comparing how it did it versus Eclipse. I think that's just the way it represents it in the tree view. I don't think, I mean, it, we still have the different folders. I don't believe it automatically makes them for you. Although I thought someone might have said the newer version does or there was, there was uh, a tool to do that or something like that. There is a text um, view border XML that um, allows for the rounded buttons. Notice those are slightly rounded. Gives it, you know, some people would prefer that. Layouts. We have three different XML files. Each one of them corresponds to one of the activities. Um, to your point, the list is, oh, that's a list item, okay? So this is going to be added to a list that is part of the activity. We have a view contact, which is a scroll view, and an add contact, which is another scroll view. Why put those guys in scroll views? The, 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 the add and the, and the view contact are in scroll views. Well, yeah, and in case you're on a device that has a small screen. So then you can go and scroll up and down for that. All right. The menu now, that's something we have not used before. There's an XML for it. Actually, I am going to, I keep waffling on this issue, but I am going to have to, I'm, I have to check out the, the menus. It might just be that I'm running a goofy version of the emulator. I'll have to see. But anyhow, um, there's an XML for the address book menu, which remember was that first, the, the menu that's associated with the list, which has simply one item to add. Um, and there is uh, an icon associated with it. I would think title condensed would be if there's not sufficient space to display the full title or to display the title condensed. All right. All these questions are great questions. Um, but you're looking at, you know, you're asking questions about like the really fine points when we haven't even covered the basics of it yet. So let's try to get a good overview of what it does before we start zeroing in and drilling down onto the, onto the finer point. But yeah, these, these are great questions. But if I'm not mistaken, that's what that does. I mean, it makes sense. That way, you know, if, if you had it just cut off the title, it could cut it off in a way that wasn't particularly meaningful, whereas here we can, we can do that. The view contact menu, on the other hand, has two, all right, um, one for the delete and one for the edit. Notice just like the colors did last time, notice how the little icon is drawn over there. I initially panicked when I looked and I saw the red X because I thought that meant that there was an error. But no, it's telling me the icon for delete is the red X. All right. Values. Strings and styles. Nothing terribly earth-shattering there. 
let's look at the manifest, which if I'm not mistaken, this is the first manifest in a while that we have going to see something new. So I'm going to bring that into text edit so we can take a look at it. All right. Probably up to here, probably the new stuff is this stuff here. There are two other activities associated with this. All right. There is the basic and address book activity, which is the list of contacts. And that's the main activity. That's when someone launches this application, this is the activity that gets fired off. So the address book activity. So that's the activity that has a list of contacts. But we have two other activities. We have an add edit contact activity and we have a view contact activity. And again, those correspond to the activities here. Add edit contact is the activity for that will invoke this activity. View contact invokes the view contact. So that accounts for three of the four classes in Java. The fourth class is the database connector. All right. The database connector is sort of a helper class and just allows us to abstract some of the stuff from our um, from the activities to do sort of common database operations. Um, put that, encapsulate that in one place. Now, you won't notice any other objects like we had in the case of the black, blackjack or in in the pizza example and all that. Because really, this, is, this particular application is really exclusively about storing and retrieving data. I mean, there is no processing of the data. It's simply stored and retrieved. So the database connector is really the own, only object other than the GUI stuff, all right? And it provides a connection to the database and abstracts that out, and then the GUI stuff can talk to that. All right. I want to talk about two aspects of this today, and I'm trying to decide what order I want to do them in. One of the aspects I want to talk about is how the activities call each other. All right. So how the activities call each other. In other words, when I make that menu selection to add a contact, I'm in the address book activity, I start a new activity. And it's sort of like a stack. If I hit the back button, I go back one activity. So if I am in, oops. If I'm here and I hit the back arrow, I go back to the list. So the back arrow takes me out of the activity I'm in and replaces it with the previous activity on the stack. And that's pretty standard behavior um, in an Android device. All right. So let's start looking at the address book activity. The address book activity extends list activity. All right? It's the first time we've seen that, right? And what does that really mean in a nutshell? It just means that a list activity already comes with it part of the GUI. All right? Typically, you've noticed that in the applications we've done, we've had 
the XML for the whole screen. All right. Here, there's really no need to do that because a list activity has as part of the list activity built into it a list view. So we don't have to create a list view in the XML. The list activity already has a list view associated with it. So notice there's nothing in the XML for a list view. There's simply the XML for what each entry in the list consists of. And in this case, it is simply a single text view to contain the name of the contact. The list itself we get for free. We get for free by virtue of the fact that we've chosen this to be a list activity. All right. Again, in object-oriented terms, you have activities, and then inherited from that are some specialized activities. And specialized activities are activities, all right? So they do everything activities do, but they have some additional characteristics. That's what it means to have a, a class inherit from another class. It has everything that the superclass has, plus it has some more stuff. And in this case, a list activity has everything a regular activity has, but it has a built-in list. So we don't have to go through, through the trouble of creating the list. All right. We simply grab a pointer to it. Okay. And that pointer to it, let me go and copy this into... We simply say that our contact list view, we just say get list view. So get list view is what? It's a method. It's a method on what class? on a list activity class. All right. We know that it has a list view because it's a list activity. And list activities, we can ask for the list that we want. Now, we're going to set some adapters. Or, I'm sorry, set some listeners and then... Um, set up an adapter. All right. An adapter is what allows us to automatically populate that list. All right. But first we set each item on click to the view contact listener. So in other words, when we click on a item that's there, it calls the onClick method on view contact listener. And what is view contact listener? It's defined down here. And it's an item click listener. Notice how that's different than the click listener that we had before, because before we simply had a button click listener, so it was on click listener. This is on item click listener, which is the kind of listener that corresponds to when a item is clicked. Now notice that there's a different method that we implement here. We don't implement the on click. We implement on item click. And we get some different arguments here. All right. So, right now, I'm not going to talk about how the list gets initially populated. We'll just assume that the list is populated, which it is in our case. We're going to look at what happens when you click on this list. 
All right. In other words, the first thing I'm going to do is talk about how this activity talks to this activity. All right. So when I click on When I click on that item, I create an intent. All right. An intent is this activity intends or wants to invoke another activity. So we want to start a new activity from this activity. So we create a new intent. And who is creating the intent? Address book this as part of address book this in this activity's Car, starting an intent, uh, another one. And what do we want to call? We want to call view contact class. That's the activity that we want to call. Now, we somehow have to get one second. We somehow have to get some information to that second activity. What information do we have to get to that second activity? Well, which contact did we click? Well, let me, let me add a second contact real quick. Let me add Bob. So I now have two people on this list, and I can click either one of them. If I click Mike, I want to bring up Mike's information. If I click Bob, I want to bring up Bob's information. So it's not enough for me to specify, not enough for me to specify that I want to call that second activity. I somehow have to get data to that second activity. And that's what I'm doing here. View contact, put extra, row ID, arg3. What that does is that tacks on some additional data to this intent. So if we think about an intent, we have to say what activity we want to start, and we might have to pass some data to it as well. In this particular case, what activity do we want to start? We want to start the view contact activity. So my intent is called view contact and I'm starting that activity. But that's not enough. We have to put a piece of information out there so that that activity, the second activity, knows which guy we clicked on so it can pull up the right person's information. All right. Do we have to pass any data when we click Add? Do you think we have to pass any data when we click Add? We do? What do we pass? Well, remember, the add goes from when we, when I click add from this menu, I'm on the list, I click add, and I get a blank screen. So no, I don't have to pass any, any data when I call that add intent. So that
calling that intent is going to look a little different than this intent. In fact, let's go and look at that intent. And that's right here. What does our intent do? We create our intent. It's called add new contact. It's add edit contact class. So it's the activity to add or edit a contact. All we do then is start that activity. All right. And then when we do, when it comes back, we do something. We call the supers. Um, the, the supers um, on item selected in case there's anything that happens there. But notice the difference between these two. One we pass data, one we don't. If you're making a new contact, essentially you're starting with a blank slate. So you don't have to pass anything to the screen. If, however, you are editing a person first viewing and then editing, we have to pass some sort of ID from the first activity to the second activity. And that's exactly what we do here. We put the extra data, we use this put extra method to add some data to the intent. And that second activity is going to pluck that data out of the extras with the intent and use it to retrieve the right person. This is where I wish you all had done some server-side web scripting like the ASP.NET um, class. Because this is almost the same as when you go between two web pages and you pass data on the query string. All right. What's the query string? The query string is additional information that you send from page one to page two. All right. So if I do a Google search for Android, if I look up in the URL, there's going to be Google's URL, a question mark, and something like Q equals Android. So I'm passing the data to the second page saying, hey, the thing I want to look up is Android. All right, because you couldn't simply just call Google search results without telling it what you wanted to search for. All right, what that doesn't even make sense. What would happen? It would have to display every web page ever. Uh, doesn't make sense. Same thing here. We can say to bring up a contact of view without telling the activity what which of the contacts we wanted to view. And we do that by putting that data in the extra portion of the intent. So think of it this way. I can draw this. An intent if I want to start an intent between activity one and activity two, I do it by creating an intent object. What does that intent object contain? It contains the specific activity that I want to start off, and it also contains some extra data. Now, when I go from the list to add mode, I don't have to pass any extra data. I just need to say that's the activity I want to call. When I go from the list to viewing a contact, I have to specify in that extra data what data it is I want to pass. And that's what I do. All right? Via this. So now let's look at that view contact activity.
All right. Really what I'm interested in now is not necessarily the details of the database retrieval and so on. I really want to focus initially on the mechanism by which one activity calls another activity. All right. So this is not a list activity. It's just a plain old activity like we've had before. Contains a row ID, which we use to pull up the person that we're interested in. Blah, 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 blah. Super on create. Set contact, content view, our layout view contact, uh, contact. That's the XML that we had before. So far, this is no different than any other activity we've had. We get some pointers to the different text boxes. All right. Here's the difference. The second activity now has this antenna object. It got this antenna object got created over here, got passed through the Android framework, and it ends up in this activity object. So it's like you're sending a message. The activity is sort of like who the message was addressed to. I want to start this activity. And the ID of the person, the contact that we wanted to, to view, is part of the message that goes to it. So, once activity two has it, it can actually grab the intent that was passed over and grab the extras, right? Remember, this little data message that we send is called the extras, the extra data. So all the data that we're passing from activity one to activity two goes in the portion of the intent called the extras, all right? The main part of the intent is the intent itself. The extras is additional information that the intent is going to need to do its job. So, I can pull from that the row ID, which I pull out of the extras under the name row ID. We could potentially pass several things as part of the extras. All right, We could pass a lot of data if we wanted to. We, we're not limited to just passing one thing in the extras. But each field that we pass, we give a name to. And this one we called row ID. So I'm pulling the row ID out of the extras and I'm telling it, well, what's it called in the extras? It's called row ID. How do we know it was called row ID? Because when we created it, we put it out there with a, with a, a value of row ID. What is row ID? It is a static constant that simply has the word row ID in it. All right? That way we don't have to like worry about hard coding. We just know that, hey, row ID, the static variable row ID is where we are getting the name of the row ID. Once it has the row ID then, then, we're going to have the wrong one here. Once that second activity has the row ID, then it can do the magic. And it can load the contact it can execute this load contact and pass the row ID in. 
All right. This load contact task is a task, and this is where we're going to stop off here. All right. This is where we're going to leave this off here. We, we have to sort of we have to sort of cover this in passes because there's really there's a or there's something I forgot about um, in here, and that's threading. So we'll talk about tasks and threading and asynchronous tasks um, in addition to that. The point I want to focus in now is activity one calling activity two. It does it via an intent and it can pass additional information as part of the extras. So the extras can be put as could can be included in the intent and then that gets passed over to the second activity and then the second activity can pluck it off. Again, uh, if I ever have any of you guys in CISS 243, I'll say the opposite. I'll say, remember the intent with the extras? That's exactly what a query string is. Same idea. You're passing values and you're giving them a name so that the second thing can pluck those names out and use that data. Now, let's look at Creating the add activity. Creating the add activity, if you remember, was simpler. It's simpler because we don't have to pass any data. So, we simply create the new contact intent, say the name of the class that we want to call, and start it up. All right? Since we're adding a new contact, we're starting with a blank slate, so we don't have to pass anything from the first contact, or the first activity to the second activity. And that guy looks like this. All right. Now, this activity, what's it do? Does just like we've done with all of our activities so far. Super on create, set the content view, grab pointers to the different text, uh, edit text fields, then it grabs the extras. All right. Hmm. I thought that I said that with an add, there was no need to pass data along in the extras. Well, that's true. However, this activity is used for two different things. The name of the activity ought to be a clue, right? It's called add edit contact. So this activity gets called when we're adding a new contact and when we're editing an existing contact. We can more or less see that by looking at the screens. Here's the screen that we add a contact at. Right? Text box, text box, text box, street, zip, and so on. And save contact. If I pick up a contact and then say I want to edit them, I'm getting the exact same screen. What's the difference? The difference is that in the case of an edit, I'm populating those fields from the fields in the database. Or in case of an add, I'm starting out with a blank slate. Okay? So, calling the same activity, that makes my life easier because I don't have to create an add activity and an edit activity. However, I have to know which mode I'm in. This activity has to be smart enough to know if it got called because we want to edit, edit a contact or if it got called if we want to add a new contact. Well, how does it tell that? It tells that by looking at the extras. All right. If there's nothing in the extras, I'm doing an add. However, if there's something in the extras, 
I want to pull the values off. Well, what is this? What is being passed in the extras? Well, the row ID, the name, the email, the phone, the street, and the city. In other words, when I click edit contact, I'm calling the same activity, add edit contact. The only difference is I'm passing all these fields to that third activity. All right. So let's draw a sketch of how these activities talk to each other. Because remember, we only have three activities, but one of the activities sort of pulls double duty. So let's draw this. We have, first of all, three activities. And I'll use their correct names. We have the address book. That's the list. We have view contact. That's read only. And then we have add edit contact, which uh, the fields are editable, so we can edit. So, first activity that comes up is the list. Okay, thanks. First activity that comes up is the list. All right. We then have the list contains a list of contacts. Contact 1, contact 2, and contact 3. We also have a menu option to add a contact. If we click on one of these, we go to the view contact and we pass the ID number as part of the intent. So when we click on the list, a list item, we go to the view contact activity and we pass the ID. If I click add contact, I go to the add edit activity, and I do not pass. I pass no data. All right? So I don't pass any data. If I click on then the edit menu selection on view contact, contact, I go over here I call that activity and I pass all the fields. The ID, the name, the address, email, city, state, and zip. Pardon me? They're empty? Yeah, it's passing what it is. So if, if there was nothing in there, it's passing that, that is empty. So, this activity absolutely has to have an ID because it's viewing contact. This activity could get an ID if we're editing a contact, but it doesn't have to. And if it doesn't get an ID, it knows that we are to go into add mode. So, to go back here now and look, we're looking at the add edit activity, I think, yes. We test to see if there's any data passed. Remember, the extras is the 
bundle of data that gets passed between two activities via the intent. So I can pluck out of the intent all the extras and I can see if there's anything there. Something there means that we're in edit mode and we populate those fields by pulling the name, email, phone, city, state, and so on from it. Nothing there means that we're starting with a blank slate. So we don't populate those text boxes. We don't put anything in them. Question? The row ID, think of that as being like in, in um, um, database terms of primary key. All right. So it, 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 it's a unique identifier. It would be like the contact number. Uh, we haven't talked about that yet. We just need to know that it, gets, it can get passed. We'll see, we'll see later on in the process where that row ID actually gets generated. But yeah, for now, that's the primary key. That's what it's going to use in all the database operations. All right. Um, that way it knows to, to update the right person. So if I change my name from Mike to Michael, it has my ID number and it will go and it will update that. I, I don't let the word row ID confuse you. All right. You, you want to pass something that is unique to the field in the database, provided you only want to get one of something. So I want to get one contact when I go to that second page. All right. When I go to that view page, so I better pass something that is is unique. And it's called row ID, but a better term for it would be primary key of field in the database. Now, we haven't talked about pulling data from the database, so we don't see how that row ID came in yet, but that is it. Now, the problem with the index is if by index you mean like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Right, the position. Right. That may or may not correspond to item 3 in the database, right? Right? Right, right. So that's why I said think of it as being the primary key. Um, for example, my list I probably would want in what order? Alphabetical order, right? And I'm going to enter my contacts in though in just the order that I think of them, you know? So I wouldn't necessarily want to force the primary key to match the order in which they, they entered them in. The, the primary key is what is stored on the database level and that's what I need to pass. The order I display them could be alphabetical order, could be geographical, I, I sort by city, city and state, or something like that. So I could be presenting that data in the list a couple different ways, right? But I still want to be able to pass something that's going to uniquely identify a row and in database terms that is the primary key of that. Now let's look. We've shown the code for this. That simply called the activity and didn't pass any data. We've shown the code for this where it sends over the ID, and that's it. We haven't shown the code for this. So let's take a look at that now. This happens when you press the Edit button on the menu. All right? On the View Contact Activity. I think this is a view contact activity. And if I look at create options menu, all right, I have.
giảm mai code if I want to edit it what am I doing I'm simply copying over the values from the text views to that extra section so I'm here and I hit edit that's going to start an intent all right what intent is going to create an intent rather to start an activity what intent is it creating It's going to create an intent to call add edit contact all right but we want to pass these fields as part of the extras right because we want that second one when I click edit I want those fields to be pre-populated with the values that were already in there so what do I do I simply put in the extras the ID number again right because we're viewing something so there's an ID associated with it so we're passing the row ID we're passing the name where does it get the name from from the text box on this page for name where does it get the phone gets the phone from the phone text box email where does it get it from the email text box street and city yeah Yeah, that's the name of it. All right. In other words, calling I'm calling it name. That's right. That's what we'll pass it as. Question mark. Like your question mark Q equals Android. Q is the name of the field. Android is a value. These bundles are ordered pairs. There's a name of the field, then the value of the field. Yeah, name and data. what what you're calling it when you pass it because again if we're passing multiple fields over that second activity has to know what's what all right so the second activity has to say well I want to fill up that name text box I know it's in the extras but what's it called it's called name the email is called email and so on down the line they're names of values that you're passing The name is a string, so it's passing a string. No, because again, we're not creating a variable named name. We're simply creating a string literal called name. All right, so in that case, we don't have to declare a string a variable called name. So now. This puts everything in the extras and gives it the proper name. Then that add edit grabs the values off of the extras and populates it. So when I click this to edit, this is going to put all these fields in the extras as part of the intent, call that second activity, and the second activity is going to fill in all these things. So for however this got called, right, it will get that those set of extras. And I mean, it, uh, you know, um, how do I want to say this? Well, we already see in this example, I was going to say you could think of an example, but we already see in this one, where a given activity can get called two different ways, right? This activity here to add edit gets called two different ways. It gets called from this menu option on the list, and it gets called from the edit option here. And it's the same activity, 
The only difference is, is how it got populated. We could imagine a, another activity in this application, let's say, a search for activity, you know, a search for contact that was a, a brand new activity that we created where we search based on some criteria and we get a listing of, of that and there's an edit button here. Well, it could call that activity, but it would have to populate the extras in the, you know, have to, have to populate the fields the same way. And then, it, then the edit would work, and again, it would be seamless to do it that way. And the nice thing is, is these work as a stack. So if I finish this, this task is going to end, and it's going to pop back to whoever called it. All right? Um, you know, could you as, could you come up with something to do that? Possibly, but the default behavior is for it to, to send it back. Yes. Yes. So notice here, I'm editing this. And save it. Oops. We'll do it again then. I go and edit this. When I click save, it's going to go back to who invoked this, who started this activity, which is going to be that view screen. All right. If, however, I'm here, all right, on the list, I call the same activity, add contact, but I have not passed it any data because this is brand new. You start with a clean slate. I go and type in the name of my person. Hit save, and boom, I'm back on the list. All right. In both cases, I, I, when the activity was finished, it went back to the activity that invoked it. And that, that's default behavior. Could you, could you mangle it to do something else? Quite possibly, yes. But keep in mind that, you know, you've heard the expression, go with the flow, you know. Um, if there's a certain default behavior within the Android framework and Android apps, it's probably bad to try to fight against that too hard. Why do I say that? Number one is consistency. People are used to Android apps working a certain way, all right? And if you do something different than that, that makes your application confusing, or po has a potential to make your application confusing. The other thing is it's going to be a lot of work um, to shoehorn it a different way, and the net effect is to make your application uh, inconsistent with the rest of the Android world and all that. So. That's why you kind of want to avoid that. It's best to sort of go with the flow with this. And in that way, even if you could, I'm not sure that that would be the best idea. Let it, you know, let the framework handle it, you know. I'm perfectly happy to, to know that the framework handles certain things and let it handle it, you know. Okay. This is starting activities and creating intents in a nutshell. All right. It is done by creating an intent object and possibly passing additional data as part of that intent object. Once that second activity gets invoked, it um, can then pull the data off of the extras 
and do something with it. Now, the one thing that we didn't see, I'll go a little bit long today just to wrap this up, is how does this finish? In other words, I go and I click mic and I click edit. I click save and boom, that activity disappears. So that activity finished. What do I revert to? I revert to the activity that started that second activity. So let's look at that code real quick. All right. There's a bunch of stuff in here. This is a relevant code. That when all the database stuff is done, I call the finish method. And the finish method finishes out this activity and returns control back to the previous activity. And again, it could be, in, in this particular case, it would be one of two activities. Because this can get called from one of two activities. Questions on any of this? That, in my mind, is enough for today. All right? Because it's not trivial. Anytime you have, you know, these activities are, in a way, like web pages, right? Web pages, um, the web is, is, is called a stateless protocol, right? Which means that without if you don't put forth any effort, every request you make to a web server is treated like a standalone request. All right? Clearly, there's ways around that, right? Because you can log into Canvas and you stay logged into Canvas. So it remembers who you are from the time you've logged on until the time that you're done. All right? The same idea is here that each one of these activities is sort of its own little independent thing. All right? Now, what we want to do, though, is we want to be able to call it and pass data. And that's a challenge in a lot of programming. Again, the obvious analogy for me is to think of web programming and passing data from one page to another. Idea is exactly the same here, though, passing data from one activity to another. We have two more things, three more things that we need to cover about this. We need to talk about menus. We'll probably save that till last uh, to make sure that I get that rolling. Um, and I'm not mistaken about any of that stuff. Um, we need to talk about the database functionality, which again, we've abstracted and put all that in its own class. We've encapsulated that there. So the other classes don't have to really know a lot about databases. They just know how to talk to this class. And the third thing we need to do, talk about are asynchronous tasks. All right? What does asynchronous mean? Not synchronized. So not at the same time. Typically in processing, like if you have, a, if you have code, statement one executes, then one does statement two execute after statement one executes. Statement three executes after statement two, and so on down the line. That's synchronous. They're synchronized. You have a problem with Android um, in that some operations could potentially take a long time. All right? So, if I'm going off doing a database query, which is taking a long time, and again, we're talking about a long time in computer terms, not a long time in human terms. So we're not talking about a week. We're talking about a few seconds. Right? If in the meantime, I'm trying to do something else on my phone, and my phone is waiting for the database operation to finish, 
that could cause my application to sort of freeze up or my phone to freeze up or whatever. So what we do is we sort of spin off these tasks so that our UI can still handle things like, gee, I want to make a phone call now even though this database query isn't finished or whatever. So we don't want, we, we want to be able to sort of separate that out and split that out and let that execute on a thread all by itself so that we can still interact with our phone. Um, classic error message that you see on applications that aren't written particularly well is that application such and such has stopped responding. What that means is it's waiting for something to finish before it can handle your pressing something on the screen. And that's not good when you see that kind of error, right? Because it's something's hogging up all your processing and then you've sort of lost control of your device while it's doing that. All right. The solution to that is to spin off a second process, um, a second thread actually. Um, process is, is the wrong word there. And we'll talk about that next time as well. All right. That's all I had for today.